In this episode of Brainiacs, you'll see how NYU researchers are protecting people who speak up and stopping hackers who hack cars and companies. First up, students in the Immigrant Rights Clinic over at the NYU Law School are not only defending the rights of immigrants, but also their advocates. They documented over a thousand instances of retaliation against immigrant rights activists, mostly during the Trump administration, and they brought those stories to life in this interactive map. We really hope that this map can be part of sort of a national moment of reckoning about what's been happening to immigrant communities and immigrant rights activists. You can see the types of retaliation the activists experienced and the agencies involved. You can search for a particular name, so if you're interested in trying to figure out what happened to Ravi Ragbir, you can type in his name in the search bar, see what happened to him in New York, because the idea is to, to you know, bring immigrant defenders' voices um, to the forefront. And when it comes to using your voice, whether you're at work or in class, there's proof that we can have each other's back, thanks to new research from the Wagner School of Public Service. Let's say you have this brilliant idea, so you tell your boss and explain how it's going to increase revenue and be so great for the company. This concept of speaking up to a supervisor is called upward voicing. But then if your boss is like, hmm, nah, then poof, your idea, it's gone. One of the things we know from research is that information is held by people throughout the organization, not just the managers. For two and a half years, Professor Patricia Satterstrom and her colleagues at Harvard and Yale studied the voice cultivation process. They determined the best pathways for teams to support new ideas. She says if a coworker brings up an idea, you can help keep it alive by amplifying it, legitimizing or exemplifying it, and saying things like, hey, that's interesting, or I know that's worked elsewhere. Also uh, developing, which is actually asking questions, asking questions not just for yourself, but for other people. You kind of see that hey, my colleague spoke up and our manager didn't really hear what they're saying, but I actually think if I start asking these questions, their idea will become more relevant. And over at NYU Tandon, researchers are making two types of cyber attacks impossible thanks to new technology. First, car attacks. Did you know it's not that hard for hackers to hijack your car? That's because there are countless computers controlling everything from your steering to your seatbelt. It's not uh, that difficult for then the attacker to go and use ac the access they have to that shared network to be able to do things like send messages to your brakes, um, tell, tell your brakes not to engage or you know lock you in the car and uh, disable your like lock the steering column okay that sounds terrible and like it should be a movie which it is Ouch. in real life professor justin capos and his collaborators created the open sourced software uptain to ensure cars get updates securely so they are harder to hack and to protect corporations they created in toto also open sourced this software forces companies to follow through with their own cybersecurity checks. Shouldn't they be doing that already? In many cases, the answer seems to be no. There's been situations with even companies like Microsoft and Apple and others that have accidentally pushed out updates they didn't mean to. He says Intoto might have prevented the recent SolarWinds breach that compromised at least 100 companies. 